Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Cooner, Boston's Bulldozer, here on the Cooner Report. This is a very, very special interview. People say there are no American heroes left. That's not true. I'm going to be speaking to one right now. Welcome, Captain Thomas J. Hudner. Thank you so much, sir, for your service and for doing this interview. Thank you, Jeff. My pleasure, truly my pleasure. And Adam Makos. Great to be with you, Jeff, thank you. In October and November of 1950, as we are now imposing a blockade on the Korean Peninsula, and our planes are now bombing the communist forces from the air, and now US ground troops are beginning to pour in, we're now on the verge of World War III. To the horror of all horrors, communist China the biggest land army in the world sends its troops pouring into North Korea. Near the Chosin Reservoir, 15,000 American troops are now trapped, surrounded by 100,000 communist Chinese troops. The fear is it will be a massacre. It will be a slaughter. You, along with your other fellow airmen, are now told you have to go in there, save our boys, and bomb Chinese positions. Your wingman, Ensign Jesse Brown, his plane, either by small fire or whatever, small arms fire, is hit. It's leaking fuel. The fuel pressure is now uh, reducing very quickly. It's, it's going down fast. The plane loses control. It crashes. You see your good friend and buddy, your brother in arm. He's stuck, trapped underneath the plane. It's freezing cold. It's 15 degrees Fahrenheit. There are communist troops and snipers everywhere. The plane is now on fire. You do something that is not just heroic with all due respect, it's almost unheard of. You take your plane and you voluntarily and deliberately crash land your own plane to save your friend and brother, Ensign Jesse Brown. You crash your plane, you get out of your plane. Captain Hudner, what happened next? I went to the, his aircraft to see just what the situation was in his plane. And uh, the snow on the ground was about a, two and a half feet deep. And when I got to his plane, I saw he was held in by the wreckage of the, of the plane. It was difficult to get up to, to see just what the situation was because with the snow so deep, I couldn't get any footing on it, almost anything at all. It was even difficult to get up to look inside the cockpit. But Jesse was there, obviously. His leg was pinned in by the side of the inside of the cockpit and the control stick. But I ran back to my airplane and told the flight leader who was flying overhead <coughs> what the situation was and we needed some equipment to get Jesse out of there. And an axe and a fire extinguisher were about the only things that I could think of that he could get at the base camp. <coughs> Then went back and spoke with Jesse for a while, but there, there wasn't much to talk about after, and it was quite awkward. But he uh, he brought his wife up several times. His wife is Daisy. Her name was Daisy. There was Daisy. Well, a helicopter did come. It was a Marine helicopter. That, and the helicopter pilot, who uh, 
had recognized Jesse because he was one of those that we brought from the States to Korea. And he was almost shocked when he saw who it was. And he wanted to get Jesse out of that airplane as much as anybody. But he finally called me aside and said that uh, <clears throat> there was no way that we could get Jesse out of that airplane. He said, so you have two, two things to consider. You can, you can come with me, but I've, I've got to go. Incidentally, it was about 4.30 in the afternoon there. So it's getting dark. It's getting dark. And you're and worried that the communist Chinese forces at night may infiltrate and kill you and kill the, the, the pilot of the, of the uh, helicopter, correct? Yes, that's, that's right. And uh, so I had the choice of going with him. I mean, going, yes, going with a helicopter pilot or staying there to protect Jesse however I could. But it was obvious to me that uh, I, I wouldn't be able to get out of there. <clears throat> that uh, Jesse was near death. And I don't know, it could have been the last moments I was with him, he was dead, but uh, I didn't know. So I chose to go <coughs> with the helicopter. I, I said goodbye to Jeff, but I don't have the faintest idea whether he heard me or not. I don't think he did. I think he had frozen from the, from the low temperatures. Captain Hudner, it's very moving in the book. Um, what were the last words that Ensign Brown, Jesse, said yeah. to you? He said, tell my wife, Daisy, how much I love her. Captain Hudner, I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. As somebody whose parents, whose grandparents, suffered immensely under communism. The sacrifices that you made, that your brothers in arms made in Korea, in Vietnam, throughout the entire Cold War, I can't thank you enough. You gave my family their dignity back. When the Berlin Wall came down, you gave my family and hundreds of millions like my family their dignity back, their freedom back, their honor back. From me, from my family, from my grandparents, thank you for your service. May God bless you. You are America's hero. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.